your call? Yes. Was there a specific moment? Was there a text of scripture? Was there a sermon? Was there somebody who sp- stood up there and just wham! And you find yourself flamoxed and just said, this is what God wants. Yeah. Is there such a moment? A Damascus moment, I call it. calling on your life Mm -hmm. needs to be seen by somebody before you experience it. A calling on your life. That is such an important principle. Needs to be seen. Wow. Wow. When, when we, when we read about Christ, uh, the prophet Anna saw who he was before Mm. he rose into ministry. Yes, and so there are certain things that as I was growing up and even before my grandfather took me to uh, live with the family Mlazi, growing up, there were messages that were being, when I look back now, planted. Planted, say, yes. You are special. You are different. I remember one of the reverends in the church, um, Reverend Majos, Mkocho Umajos, who was mm-hmm. my grandfather's driver, one of the drivers. And the one time he came home to collect a car and he was going somewhere. And we were having a conversation. And he says to me in the conversation, hmm. And I kind of thought, you know, and it reminded me of something he had said when I had, some, had done something wrong at home. And, and he was upset. And he says to me, And I was young. I must have been eight or nine thinking, yeah. how can you be trusted at that age? Yeah. <laughs> so there were certain things mm. that, were, mm. that were constantly passed on. Okay. Uh, planted. Okay. The two defining moments was when in 1993, he took me from home and placed me under the care mm-hmm. of uh, mm-hmm. Deacon Gwala. And um, his conversation with me was around safety and his feeling, and he used to say this loudly at church, he would say, and so when he spoke to the few reverends that um, he instructed to take me and place me in the care of the Kuala family, he said, and he took me to the family. And for a lot of people, that was the beginning and the sign. And of, of course, it spoke a lot of things.
1999 on the on the 10th of July that is when I had a personal experience and again it, it it might take a bit of time explaining to you but it was in a prayer moment where there had been a prophecy I wasn't even there I was at varsity because I was already it was my second year at varsity um, here in Johannesburg and there'd been a prophecy that when I come back home they uh, certain leaders need to take me for prayer. And I got home and I had my own plans mm. and I was told, no, this Saturday, you can't go where you want to go to because we have to have a prayer and we are fasting. And I thought, well, you know, these things are not uncommon in the church. Mm. The first time the, spoke, the Spirit spoke to me directly in, in prophecy was I had gone for, uh, in the church, when you are having an illness that is persistent and that might require surgery, mm -hmm. we consult in the Spirit. So we okay. go for prophecy, and there's mm -hmm. a prophetic word that you get. Mm -hmm. And I'd gone because I had issues with my eyes. Um, and there was an issue. My grandfather had thought maybe I should have um, a, a surgery at the time. And, and the Holy Spirit said to me, this is nothing. This is not an issue. But what I want you to focus on is that there is a bigger role that I have for you in ministry. Mm -hmm. This is 1993. I, again, could not locate that. I, could, I didn't even focus on that, but it, it is something that worried me a little bit, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. quickly I moved away from it. Mm Echo <laughs> Well, I'm going to have no 
So when this happened on the 10th of July, it linked back to that message. Yes. yes. But when we pe- went back to church for the service, it was only then that things sort of gelled. I don't know what I say, whether to say they came together or they fell apart. <laughs> but they something fell, happened. Something happened. <laughs> I struggled. I struggled with my calling for a while. What do you mean struggled? Struggled in terms of acceptance, struggled in, in terms of understanding it. There, there, there obviously was a broader in me, a broader understanding and embracing that, well, this is it. But because this was all happening, particularly Pagate Wabandu, yes. um, and up until that point, I really hadn't heard a personal thing with God. Um, hmm. I, I struggled until around about 2002 when we went to Mozambique on a, on a mission. And, and I think God understood my struggle because, and I'm happy to say this, that there were people that were questioning my, my anointment and my appointment yes, into the yes, office. Of course. And so those voices amplified my own questions to say, but God, did you really call me? <laughs> and, and I'm young, I'm 19 and really, you know. What is this? And in 2002, roundabout, when we were in Mozambique, we, w- we got to Mozambique and prior years there had been floods. And, and we were invited, there was an old man who knew my great-grandfather who wrote a letter to me and it was delivered to my office. And he said his dying wish is to meet me because he knew my great-grandfather, he knew my grandfather, and he had heard that God had installed me into leadership and his wish before he dies was to see me. Yes. So we made a special uh, arrangement to have a service in Mozambique. And when we went there, after the floods, there was drought and it had rained for just about, just about a year or a year and a half. And they didn't have food and they were struggling. And we had a service. At the end of the service, this man speaks and is very happy and emotional. And he says, what I'd like for you to pray for is that there is rain. We are in no. desperate need of rain. In the spirit, in that moment, you know, this was after the service. I could have said, well, we'll pray for that and walk away. But in that moment, I said, well, let, let us pray for that. And I knelt and I prayed for that. Right there. Right there. In a matter of about two to three hours, the service ended about 3, 4 p.m., by 6, 6.30, mm. it poured. Oh, Jesus. It poured. You know? <laughs> wow. When I was in my hotel room and it was pouring, I wept. Of course. I mean. And the spirit said to me, if ever you needed a confirmation, this, this is, is it. it. This is it. And that was my moment of acceptance. Hey. Hi. <laughs> 